Good evening again. Uh, this is a rezone of property at the southwest corner of Reedy Road and Castlegate Drive from R1 to R2A. Uh, it's roughly 1.52 acres. Uh, this will be dealing with just the rezoning. After this will be a conditional use request um, that deals with density on the lot. Um, current zoning is R1. It's a single family residential district. To the north you have R1. West is agricultural district. East and south is R1. Currently on the lot is a single family home uh, that is 1,375 square feet with a 1,200 square foot detached accessory building. Uh, the R2A zoning district, which is what they're wanting to rezone to, is designed for a slightly higher population density while still maintaining the basic restrictions um, as of an R1 district. Attached single family dwellings in this area are consistent with this type of zoning. R2A falls under single family as it pertains to the comprehensive plan. Uh, there is a mix of zoning in the area with R1 to the east and south, A1 to the west, and then there is some quiet office to the north. Um, the reason, um, and this will get more into the conditional use, but there is a large utility easement that runs across this property. It's a 100 foot uh, power line utility easement, um, which is why they're wanting to rezone from R1 to R2A to better use the property. And uh, based on the review, the rezoning would likely not harm any adjacent property. Do we have any questions at this time? Any questions for Ryan? Is the applicant here to speak in favor or on behalf of this request? I feel like we you've been with us for several know, meetings in I a row. Know, it just keeps coming. This keeps uh, coming. My name is Bobby French with Central Arkansas Professional Survey. I'm my office is 1021 Front Street. Um, we've been looking at this property. The owner's been looking at this thing for three or four years with staff. We've had multiple staff meetings trying to figure out a way to develop this in a way that uh, would work for everyone. Uh, I know it says we're going to multifamily, but we're more with a conditional use we're wanting to do like townhomes, you know, not apartments or anything like that. Town, you know, if you see Rory's built some of these over off of uh, Donaghy. Yeah, up there in North Donaghy, uh, Washington area. And, um, you know, it wouldn't be a whole lot different than what you see on the on Reedy Road just to the north up there on the golf course. But it, it would be a, a newer style. We did have, we sent some pictures, I don't think they got them in there, of kind of the what the architect has. I'll send those down to y'all. Uh, y'all want to look at that kind of style, that what they're wanting to build, uh, have a garage and house. You know, it's a real real nice development is what he's wanting to do. If y'all know Rory, they've done, y'all can go around Conway and look at anything they've mm -hmm. done. Him and his wife both, they do, they do great work. And it's not going to be a slum by any means. It's going to be a real nice, uh, establishment. Uh, if y'all got any questions, we'd be glad to answer them. And the reason why we went conditional use where we could do some conditions, I know probably there is other folks here that, you know, we're willing to work. They want to want to make it look nice and it's going to be, you know, the parking is going to be on the inside. Uh, so the outside, you can see the sod will be nice and there won't be any parking out on that street. And, you know, there'll be some landscaping and all that stuff along the way. Uh, y'all got any Questions, we'll be glad to answer. Are there any questions for Bobby? Have the neighbors or anybody that is opposed, have they seen what it's going to I be? I don't think they've seen those. They didn't put that in. We sent those to staff. I don't think they put them on. They were going to bring them up on the screen today, but I think uh, they were having difficulty, so that didn't happen. We can tape them up. Yeah, we can tape them up <laughs> there. So. Okay. I think Rory's here, too. He can say a few words, y'all. All right. Thank All right. you. Uh, is there anyone here to speak in favor of this request? Good evening. I'm Rory Thompson at 2759 Carl Stewart. Thank you for your time this evening. So I have owned this property. I'll try to be as brief as possible. I have owned this property for almost 10 years now. And as Bobby has mentioned, uh, currently the, the property has a house and a shop on it. It's uh, pretty dated, in need of a lot of TLC. Uh, we've looked at a couple of different concepts over the years, but the property has two real problems to it. Uh, the, the house now has septic. It's on a septic tank. So you got to bring sewer over to the property if you're going to go to do anything significant with the property. Talked to Conway Corp recently, um, and it's going to cost me about $120,000 to bring sewer about 50 or 60 feet. Uh, so with that, the options of building one or two or three homes is pretty much out. I mean, it doesn't, it doesn't pencil. 
to do that. Um, so that's why I'm needing to build about eight townhomes there, as you see, and I wish this was in the letters and I wish that the neighborhood got, got this as well, but they're gonna be very nice homes, comparable to what you see in that area. Maybe if, I mean, just a newer style, basically. Uh, more compact, more dense, and there'll be a total of eight units. They'll face the road, but the garages will be in the rear. And we can still work on some of the, like the designs and things like that. But we have to get zoning before we do anything else. Uh, the homes are going to be about 1,400 square feet. Um, you know, I've heard, I've read the letter today. So I, know, I know there's a couple letters in opposition. So I read the letter today about uh, wanting to, to buy the property to do a park or something like that there. And uh, I would be willing to either donate or give the land to the neighbors if they want to put something over there, or I'd be willing to put some kind of little park or pickleball or something like that if, if uh, that's an option. I've also visited with Jeff Brooks this afternoon uh, with the Hickory Creek POA. Uh, I know that crime is a concern of theirs and it's a concern of mine as well. Uh, just so you know, we do monitor all of our tenants. We do background checks on them on every application. We don't allow any kind of violent criminals. Um, I cannot guarantee no crime, of course. Uh, but to date, I've never had any kind of violent crime on any of our property. Uh, if approved, we'll work with the neighborhood and the city for a final design. Uh, my wife will build the property, Storybook Homes. There are several houses around the downtown area to get an idea of what we're going to be doing over there. Um, and then they'll be managed by Conway Property Group, which is a local property management group. I'd be happy to answer any questions, and thank you for your consideration. Are there any questions? Oh, well, no, I'm going to have a question. Yeah, Are the, is the, do you have um, approximate square footage and then what these would lease for? Um, they're going to be about 1,400 square feet, and I would expect anywhere between 1,500 and 2,000 per month. Yeah. That's kind of where the market is in Conway right mm -hmm. now. Any other questions? Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of this request? Uh, well, the first speaker, there's two of you that, the, the first speaker gets 10 minutes and then every subsequent speaker gets three minutes. So I don't know if you want a paper, scissor, rock for it, or maybe talk to each other on who needs more time. All right, come on up. Yeah. Can you, b before we get into, can you, well, number one, the people online can't hear you without the microphone, so could you say your name and address into the microphone? My name is Jeff Brooks. I live at 320 Castlegate in the Hickory Creek subdivision. Thank I'm you. I'm the president of their POA. Thank you. Um, I did visit with, uh, with him this afternoon, and what we're looking at is, uh, because of the way that property is laid out, they're only going to be able to put these housing units on approximately one-third of that property. It's, a, it's a, a lot similar to the lots that all of our houses are on. So what you're talking about doing is putting eight units on one-third of the, of the amount of the property that we all live on. So... Can you... Is there any way that you can take it... and? Can we microphone and have the visual? I'm, I'm sorry, we don't, we need like, travel mics. Okay, thank you. This property right here is a property that was grandfathered in that is R2, okay? I have a brief statement that'll kind of fill you in on everybody's frame of mind. This is only eight days of going around hitting the neighborhoods. I didn't get one single no from any house that we knocked on the door that was not in favor of this. They're all against it. We don't want it there for two reasons. One is the property value, the second is crime. It is a crime attraction area. No matter what you do, if you go on the if you go on the, the call for Conway Police, and I took Rory's advice, and I did that on the Weems property, and what I found out was you had a couple of calls right around the corner on the Donaghy unit. You had the 1100 right around the corner from where his Weems property is. You had a shots fired. You had a hit and run. Any of the other apartment areas on the Dave Ward Drive. Any of the ones that go into the uh, apartments over there off of off of uh, going down Hogan Road, it seems like most of the calls for the police department are all drawn to these to these apartment complexes or townhomes. So, what I would like to read to you 
is this. I'm here today along with many concerned residents to speak out against the rezoning proposal and condition of use permit tied to it. This is not just a simple zoning decision. This is the safety and well-being of our community. We've already experienced firsthand the unchecked development can bring. On November 21st, 2022, a tragic incident occurred at the 700 block on Reedy Road <clears throat> near the back entrance of the subdivision. We now refer to that property as a murder house, a chilling reminder of what can happen when develop developments like this one proposed go unchecked. And now you're considering placing eight more potential problem areas right in the front of our subdivision. This would essentially surround us with high-risk properties. I appeal to each one of you, especially those with families, who would want this kind of activity near their homes? If you take a moment to look at one similar A2 zoned area and conditional use permit, you'll see a clear pattern of increased crime. We've already dealt with enough to, due to the property on the 300 block of Reedy Road, and we cannot allow this rezoning to multiply those risks. We, the resident of the surrounding areas, moved to the Country Club area for peace, safety, and the community environment, and paying a premium to do so. The proposed rezoning threatens everything we've worked for. This is an undeniable, there's an undeniable evidence and similar housing developments have led to increased crime, including homicides and other serious incidents. This decision is not just about zoning, it's about protecting our community and keeping our families safe. We strongly urge you to deny the conditional use permit. If possible, stop the rezoning altogether. We are ready to rally our neighbors to oppose this at the city council meeting if necessary, but we hope you'll do the right thing now and prevent this from moving forward. Thank you for your time and consideration. Let's find a better location for this development and keep our community safe. Now, I, I don't doubt that he builds beautiful property. I mean, I, I'm sure he's a fantastic carpenter and his properties are, are well taken care of, but he can't even, and he admits it. We talked about this afternoon. No one can guarantee the people that are going to move in there. That one unit that we deal with on the back side of the property, we continually monitor because we don't know who these people are. We have lots of children walking through there. It's right across the street from the bicycle path. Where they're going to put these units back up on Castlegate, which means we're going to be walking right past the back doors of these houses and these homes of whomever may live in there. So if you lived where we live, would you want your kids going through areas like that? I don't think so. So we implore you guys to please take a better look, a closer look at what they're trying to do here. You're taking a normal property that we all have a house on, anywhere from three to 4,000 square feet, most of our homes, and you're going to put four times the amount of square footage on one-third of an area on that particular corner. doesn't matter how pretty they are. doesn't matter how nice they are. If, God forbid, something does happen and there is a, a, another incident up there, there's eight times more risk that it can happen with that type of situation. So... We're, we're asking y'all to deny it. Um, I haven't hit anybody along all the neighborhoods, and I haven't had time to fan out completely because I've only had eight days to hit the street. But I feel pretty good about the fact that I can fill that board in if need be, and we'll take it to city council. But I'm just imploring the planning commission to please help us and stop this before it gets approved. And at that, at, after that, I'd like to recognize another one of my neighbors, Kevin Bass. Just before you step away, I thank you for your comments. Are there any questions? Have you seen the drawings of the properties? I've seen them. They're enough? great. They're beautiful. Okay. And but, but, but can you show me a drawing of the people that are going to live there? No. Well, Do you know the people well, that are going to live just, there? Sir, she's just asking a question. I, the the reason I was asking also the value, I, I know a lot of those homes in that area, even in your neighborhood, don't have a house payment that are 2000 a month. So that I, that's why I was just trying to get to the value of who is going to live there if that's your concern? That was what we saw in some of the letters. So, My you know, house payment is two thousand a month. Right. Yeah. Perfect example. And then the other concern, the other question was, you know, that is a one point five acre lot, and I drove by there. I took pictures. That mm -hmm. building in the back is abandoned looking and has broken glass and all of that. Um, I, I walked all around that. Most of the neighborhood lots are like point three, point four. Um, so it's a it's a much bigger parcel then so both the houses are going to be constructed on how much of that property the back third so how big is that okay well but he also discussed maybe having some of the land for a little but, but answer my question how, how big is that back third huh. well a third of 1.5 okay. i guess divided by three yeah okay uh, yeah i think those are good questions I mean, that, but doesn't yes. that seem like you're cramming 
that into a, a very small area that backs up right next to our subdivision. And so now you have a bunch of people lined up on that street where kids are playing, kids are walking by late at night, early in the morning. Again, you know, you're coming, we, we've already been through a tragedy two, tragedy two years ago. I was one of the ones that responded when those five shots went off. I mean, so, e even to this day, that murder has not been solved. So, um, I just, just to kind of a point of clarification, the current request is for rezoning. And so, the, there certainly is a conditional use permit for this that's the next item. But I, I just want to clarify that we are talking about the rezoning right now. And so, it, it's at least my understanding, you know, about a half mile across College down Reedy, there are some rental properties there. Is, is that correct? Half mile down College. Or a half mile down Reedy across College at Emory Cove. Half mile down College. Is half that... mile down Reedy across College. Or toward on the other side of the golf course? Yeah, so, well, not the other side of the golf course. I, I, I'm just, there are some comparable properties that. The I, condos. Are you talking they're about not the comparable. No, no, no. Okay, I'm, Nowhere I appreciate the comments from the gallery, but my question is for the speaker. No, they're not comparable. Okay. There's, so there's and, not and, rental properties? No. And, okay. the, and there, there's really no long-term comprehensive plan to, to make that a multifamily deal. I mean, you, we, we don't know who's going to be moving in there. One person, two people, five people. I mean. Are there any other questions for the speaker? Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition? I think you did introduce yes. one of your. Come on up. If you could. Your, your name and address. Hi, I'm Bob Roberts. Uh, I live at uh, 3503 James Court, uh, which is immediately mm -hmm. to the, uh, the the south uh, of Reedy. Uh, so this property, whenever I pull out of my drive, it's directly in front of me. Uh, I had a, had a little bit of a different issue with, with the property. Uh, I noticed in the notes here that they're looking at roughly 60 vehicle trips per work day. Um, Reedy is a, it's a, uh, it's a, it's not a through, uh, a through street. Uh, so we've got stop signs at each end of it, uh, that there's an elbow right there where the new subdivision for Sylvia Springs, I believe it is. Uh, so on this street that's, that's got stop signs on both ends, we're about to add quite a bit more traffic into a neighborhood that already has the Sylvia Springs addition. You might hear from Sylvia Springs, no offense at all, uh, beautiful homes over there. But we're, we're about to add in another 60 trips a day uh, on a street that it really was accommodated to be the, the tail end of the Tucker Creek walking trail. Everybody walks right through that area. So, so that crossing there on, a, uh, on Reedy is going to get much trickier for people walking across Tucker Creek Trail. Um, uh, my property runs adjacent to that, uh, the, to that walking trail, and I, I couldn't tell you how many people walk down it, but my, my schnauzers tell me that it's a 1,000 a day because they, they go to barking every time. So, so we, we, we do see a, a traffic problem on both ends of that street once they start flowing cars around that direction. And I think that's about it, all of it. I'm, I'm sure I'll, I'll echo much of their sentiments. Um, Are there any questions for this speaker? Point of clarification, did you say that the entrance would be off of Sylvia Spring? Oh, no, the, the, the entrance for this development is going to feed directly onto Reedy Road. Okay. So they're gonna have one drive. Yeah, I'm with you. We are, I'm on the other side of Reedy and there are four houses in, in our circle. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so we're all going to be pulling out there at the exact same spot. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition to this request? All right. We'll just it does. So we'll we'll ask we'll let both speakers go, and hopefully that will make sure everybody's heard. And so, hi, my name is Kevin Bass. I live at three twenty Reedy Road. Uh, which is almost directly across the street from this proposed development. Um, my wife Judy and I have lived on in James Court, so it's one of it's one of six houses in James Court right across the street. Okay, we built two of the houses in James Court. We've been there for twenty years. So um, he talked about the murder house. What, what our concern is is a little deeper 
we have, you know, I have a lot of rent, I have some rent houses in Conway, so we understand the rental business, right? Uh, we take every, uh, we, we do a lot of effort to make sure that our renters are, are vetted properly to make sure that there's less disruption as possible. Um, we have no assurance that the current owner of this development or the next owner, which is possible, are going to apply as much diligence as we would want to as people who are living right there. We're right across the street, guys. And to take a single lot where there's one house now and to cram eight onto it is just not the right place on, for this lot. I mean, we've got all residentials immediately surrounding. Now, I do own the duplex that's right next to this place as well. Now, it was grandfathered in, of course, so it is what it is. Um, we just, we are not comfortable with it. Nobody in James Court is for this. We've visited them all. We have all of their signatures on a, on a petition to say we don't want this to, to, to be built across the street from our houses, right? We just don't think, it, we think it's also a huge stretch. I mean, come on, but going from R1 to R2 and then taking it from R2 to MF1, which allows up to 12 units on a single, a single residential uh, lot. It's just not the right place for it. And I don't think you'll find anybody in this, in this immediate vicinity that's going to be for it. We are asking you to deny it. It is not the right place, and it's not something that we agree with at all. So if you think we're loud now, try to send it over to the city council. We're going to get much louder. I, I'm, I'm not mad at y'all. But look, none of you all live there. We all do. Mm -hmm. And we lock right across the street, and we're just not in favor for it. We just don't think it's it's a stretch. It's way too much. Come on, eight eight houses on a single lot. I mean, deny this, please. Thank you. We appreciate your comments. Are there any questions for this speaker? Thank you. Thank you. I think there was one more speaker. If you don't mind to come up and state your name and address for the. <clears throat> Um, minutes. All right, Rodney Tyndall. I'm at 350 Castlegate. And thank you very much for allowing me to be the unusual fourth voice of dissent. Um, Lori, I want to actually address something you said. Because you mentioned that green building mm -hmm. that's back on the corner mm -hmm. there. Well, I live directly across the street. My driveway, when I walk out on my driveway, I look at it. And they're in the person in this room that wants that building gone more than me. I can tell you that I don't think this is a right way to do it. Um, I do property management. I have rental properties too. So I know what they're gonna do to try to keep good people in there. But like you said, there's just no way to know. You, you do the best you can, but with this many people crammed in there, then I'm gonna say it's gonna be a little too dense for what it's intended for. And that leads me to a point that nobody's brought up yet. If you look at the picture, of the layout on the second to last page, I think. Yeah, you'll just flip the back page open. You'll see the layout of the lot where the utility easement's going across it and the proposed buildings. All right, so you see that low, that uh, line of trees? That's Castlegate. And that is very far upper right hand corner. That's my driveway. So my backyard is, that side yard there is next to my backyard. And so I'll be looking directly across the street into windows of a two-story set of rental property. That'll be the first thing I see when I walk out my backyard. There are no two-story buildings that I know of anywhere in that neighborhood, but yet I'll have them directly across from my backyard. That's a personal issue. This is gonna be the main issue I bring your attention to this picture. Those trees, there's no fence there. And I see a walkway proposed. Now, I don't know if the front, because I have not seen the picture of this development either. This is new to all of us. But that walkway appears to be access points into the homes. What is going to stop people from parking on that street as people who live there or guests from taking up the entirety of Castle Gate right there, parking? their cars to go visit people in these homes or the people who live there because they have multiple people living there. Because 2,000 
There's one more point on this I'll just throw on there. 2000 a month sounds great. This is like, oh, only rich people are going to live there. Not necessarily. Four or five people can come together and, get, and come up with $2,000 a month. I've personally rented to roommates because they couldn't afford mm -hmm. the $1,600 a month I charge for one of my rental properties. When we look at that level of density, now we're looking at a car for each one of them, and we're looking at where are they going to park. And I can tell you, it's going to be across the street from my house and around the corner. And that's, I think that's the end of my time. Does anybody have any questions for me? Are there any questions for the speaker? Thank you for your comments. Thanks. We appreciate it. So with that, um, we do have two agenda items, and I've got multiple screens and a paper document up here, mm -hmm. so I'm trying to do my own IT work here. Um, and so we, we do have um, the first item to consider is the request for the rezone of the property. Um, obviously, there is a CUP that is, that is on the agenda, kind of depending on how this discussion goes. So with that, I'm going to bring it into commission for discussion, questions, um, points of thought. So just with the R2A, what, how many houses can we get on there without doing the CUP? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if the power line didn't exist, they could get six. With the way the power line is, they could get four. So without the power line, they could be up to six buildings? Mm -hmm. Six units. And what did he say the sewer would cost? Does anyone remember that without having to call him I back up? I think he said over 120. 120. Okay. okay, that's good. We remember the same number. Okay, 120. When you say six units, is that that's okay. six independent, not 12, that's not 12, that's six, that's right? Six, okay, that's six. Without It's just like when my trainer right. says, do you want to get two duplexes there? So four, four units. units. Four, okay. Okay. Can I, uh, yeah, go ahead. Relevant point for discussion. I own property that shares parking with another development of Mr. Thompson's very similar to this. Um, and I, I want to honor and hear what everyone's saying about concern of what could go there. I think we also have to carry this in mind with two things. Um, None of us know who's going to end up in any property next to us, whether it's rented, owned, or what the cost is, because five or six roommates can get together to do to, to rent a 5,000 square foot house as well as they can a 1,400 square foot du duplex. And I would just like to be on the record here with saying that Mr. Thompson's properties, they've been great neighbors. I've never had a single issue for a development just like this. I just wanted to bring up, I think those of us that have been on here more than a year, we dealt with this same issue over across from the Hendricks Village, and there was a lot of concern. Um, as a real estate agent, I have only seen that property increase in value, not decrease. You know, there was a lot of fear of those townhomes moving in. What we have had to learn as a commission and as our city, not everyone wants to buy a home. They, there are people that have plenty of money that want to rent a home. And there are people that don't want yards and don't want to maintain those. That was something I've had to look at through different eyes, being a realtor and also serving on this commission, and knowing the price of land now and the development cost of land probably is the bigger thing, not the cost of land itself. But I would say very few people could afford to build a single family home and spend 120000 on sewer. And so we have to look at... Plus the cost of land. Plus the cost of land, plus the cost of development now. So... I hear we have I I could tell everyone in this room could attest that we have heard this exact I have yet to have anyone come back to us and say anything other than what Drew is saying right now that those developments ended up being great neighbors and great um great development. I'll just say personally looking at it, it looks terrible like it is right now. And I went again today to do a drive by and I took pictures, but that if I'm selling your house across the street, if I'm selling Rodney's house. I don't want to look out at that. That's going to be a detriment to his home value much more than properties that are leased. That, that's just my, my opinion on this. Uh, uh, since my name was brought up, I'll yeah. go ahead and mention I bought that house back in February. Right. And you bought it, but did you pay? Did, did I you, pay for it? Yes. Did, no, did you pay full price for it? Yes. Okay. A friend actually came to me 
Well, you and I both know what is full price. Okay. Was it listed? No. Okay. It came to me. That, that, okay. That I'm gonna. I, yeah. I'm gonna bring this back into yeah. commission. I'm sorry. I was well, trying I'm sorry, to. I was asked a question. So should I not? You weren't recognized. The question I was asking? Yeah. Well, I was responding to what he said. That that was it. So I'm sorry about that. I was okay, just responding well, to your comment about the 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 broken down building across from you. That, well, I bought the house knowing that there was a murder house. I bought the house knowing that there was a green building across the street. If I had known that you wanted to put two-story apartments across the street, and I know we can say, not, not apartments, not apartments, but they are, I would not have bought the house. I can say that. That's fair. That's fair. Now, because we both know disclosures, we both understand, I'm a realtor too, by the way, we both understand disclosures, and that is, is there anything that would keep somebody from wanting to buy this house? Well, if I go to sell my house now, I get to say, well, this commission just approved there to be some rental properties built directly across the street. So I get to use that as a disclosure now, if I want to sell this house, okay. should you go ahead with this? Thank you for your All comments. Right. Thanks. Good. Thank you. Appreciate it. I'm sorry, I was distracted and, reading. And I'm wrapping up. One no, last No, you're sentence. fine. Go ahead, Lori. I'll just... Overall, we have to look at this. We don't want a lot of vacant, rundown things sitting anywhere. And, and even earlier, all of you were sitting here for the Print Street. I don't want a house sitting on Print Street, not functioning and abandoned and mold growing in it. That doesn't help the neighbors. It doesn't help us. So I've had to look at things differently and look at things um, from a different perspective. So the reason you know, we're here looking at this tonight is because it's an option. It doesn't mean it's the only option. And that's why we will be asking some questions, you know, just like we asked, what's the other option with a different zoning? Yeah, I think that's good. Are there other comments from the commission? Just to clarify right now, we're considering the rezone. We're on, yes, we're only consider, consider the rezone. And where I was looking a moment ago um i don't i don't know that we read these out loud but just bullet two and three on the staff comments and um, that the proposed rezoning is in conformance with the comprehensive plan which calls for single family residential area and r2a falls under single family as it pertains to the comprehensive plan and I, so i think to Lori's point those are items from the planning department that we have to take into consideration tonight along with all the other comments that have been made. But the zoning has to be changed to R to A first. So that can happen without the multifamily being They are approved? two separate boats, yes. Okay, That's and then if, if just for clarification, could you tell us what other options would be if we just approved the R to A zoning, what would be something that a developer could put there that was not multifamily A units? I think that's a good question. By right, they could build duplexes on those lots. They could split the lot and build two duplexes. Two duplexes, so four units. Mm -hmm. So that was my earlier question, and yeah. I couldn't get my Google Maps to work. But um, just, you know, when you look down Reedy at Emory Cove, I think there are multiple duplexes, about 0.3 miles. Down Reedy, you have to cross college. It's on. It is on the back of that golf course, but I think there are duplexes there. So, other questions or comments from the commission? Okay. We'll go ahead and make a motion to approve the staff recommendation and approve the rezoning from R one to R two A. Second. I have a motion and a second. And just remind me, this motion requires six votes to pass. Is that correct? Okay. Just in keeping with the theme with tonight, we can do a voice vote. Can you get back there? Sure. That. That's great. Hey, is it, can I ask one more question? Of course. Can We are still in discussion. If it is, if it is zoned R1 and it stays R1, it is a 1.52 acre lot. How many single family homes can be built on that? I would have to do the math. They have to have 60 foot of uh, street that. frontage. Um, so we would just have to, it's gotta be a 6,000 square foot per lot. With the overhead power, that's where you're gonna run into problems with it. Can you kind of guess? I'm not holding you to it. 
Audie, kinda, do you have any idea? You can kind of guess. <laughs> Right, they would have to build a street. So you had six foot wide, actually six foot to six foot wide lots all the way down. Yeah, Bobby, can so you say we got so yeah we got five lots along Castleberry and then maybe one in the back. I think we had six or seven, I think we looked at before when we were trying to hit sewer. Yeah. Uh, so six single family? Yeah, I think so. Ish. Ish. It, it was kind of dependent on sewer was really or is the I mean, because we were looking at that one time, well, but it. And Bobby, just to clarify, if you did duplexes, how many? I think duplexes. You, if you just do duplexes, I think because you got you got to have hundred foot lots in R two A, so mm -hmm. you could only do three. I think you could only do three. three. Okay. If 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 I don't think he wants to do, that's not feasible. I mean, if I mean, if we don't get conditional use, really but he doesn't want to do residential there. It, it just don't work. The math doesn't work. Okay. Well, so just you, you may have been asking your question with regard to what would work because of the sewer. I interpreted that just a little bit differently. Obviously the sewer is something to consider, but also just the plot of land. You know, what could you get on there if you didn't have to think about the sewer? Because I think part of the concern, and please correct me if you, you all didn't hear this, is just what you would put on the plot of land. You know what I mean? Just the footprint of the land and the housing that's on the land. So taking out the I actual think, ability to execute I think it. Just the lot layout, the, to get lot layout, to get the minimum lot width and everything, you could get maybe five or six, five or six lots. Yeah. So I think when you start thinking about the footprint, obviously not the sewer, you know, and I the mean, utility, that, the that, that type of land in Conway traditionally could put five or six homes. Mm -hmm. And that was my question. If, yeah. Oh, okay. And R1 normally. In yeah, that's exactly what I was R1, saying. R1 is 7,000 square foot. I mean, so... 6,000 6, square foot. So, I mean, you're looking at seven or eight just if you went by square footage. Okay. 43, 5, 6 divided by. But, okay. Yeah, and like obviously he already owns the property. So, and that was not something he was interested in doing. Was, it just didn't. Yeah. It okay. All the numbers. The math didn't yeah. math when you had to take the sewer into consideration. Yeah, the power, the power, the power line, line is the problem. Line yeah, power, power line. I, I said sewer. I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry. Ooh. There's been a motion in a second, right? Great. Okay. Is there any more discussion before we take this to a vote? Okay. Very good comments and discussion. Great questions. I'm, I'm glad we have the expertise that we do. So with that, are you ready to? I am ready. Okay. Ethan Reed? Yes. Lori Quinn? I'm thinking. I'm voting for the zoning only. The zoning only. I will say yes. Mark Ferguson? Yes. Alexander Bainey is, ex, is absent. Excuse me. Jensen Tilke? Yes. Jay Winborn? Yes. Brooks Davis? Yes. Tanisia Roundtree? Yes. I am a yes. Rebecca Fincher? Yes. So with that, the zoning passes, which does bring us to our last agenda item to consider the same property, but a CUP. So I think... Ryan has us for this. Okay, last one for tonight. Um, we've been talking about this property already. It's 377 3D Road. Um, what they're proposing is a density change to MF1. It's going to cap out at eight total dwelling units. Um, let me just read through the staff comments and then you guys can get back in your discussion. Uh, one, the development is limited to a maximum of eight total dwelling units. Access shall be limited via a driveway from Reedy Road. The building's primary exterior should be composed of brick, rock, or a cement fiber board product. Vinyl siding as a primary cladding material shall be prohibited. Vinyl siding shingles may be only used on gables and dormers. The development shall be subject to site development review in accordance with Article 10 of the Zoning Code. The property shall be platted in accordance with the subdivision ordinance. Enhanced landscaping shall be provided along all property lines at the ratio of one canopy tree every 20 feet or understory tree every 10 foot. And additional shrubs installed in the form of a hedgerow shall be required to screen parking, mechanical, mechanical equipment, and or dumpster trash enclosure. Uh, the conditional use shall become null and void if construction for the use is not commenced within 18 months from the date of approval. 
All signage shall be permitted and installed in accordance with the Conway sign code. No zoning code, excuse me, no zoning variance required as, as a result of the commencement of the conditional use may be requested. Any change to or expansion of the approved use shall require an amended or new conditional use permit. And finally, the conditional use permit shall expire if the use ceases for a consecutive period of greater than 18 months. Again, they are um, requesting a total of eight total dwelling units and staff reviewed this and um, we would recommend approval. Are there any questions for Ryan? Get back to my spot. Okay. Is the applicant here to speak on behalf of this request? Bobby French, uh, my office is 1021 Front Street. Uh, again, we're talking about this for eight units. We don't want any, he don't want any more, so it's going to be limited to eight units. No, it's MF1, you can do 12, but it's, you know, conditional use for eight. Uh, I know people, Conway's got to change at some point where they realize you're going to have to have some smaller, I mean, not everybody's in a 3,000 square foot house. Uh, I mean, Rental houses, just because you're in a rental house, don't make, doesn't mean you're a murderer or a killer or a rapist. I mean, I, I rented a house a long time before I got married. I never did any of those. Uh, and, you know, I understand their concerns. Uh, this is really going to be nice. I mean, it's not trying to do anything. And landscaping, he's willing to work with landscaping. I mean, he's not wanting just to have a house, somebody walk out their door and just see a back of a building. It's going to be a nice looking building. When you look out, you're going to see something nice. And there's going to be landscaping along that street out there. There'll be street trees planted. They'll have sidewalk. It'll, it'll be nice. And I mean, willing to make any concessions on some on some things on architectural design or any kind of landscaping or, you know, even I mean, to answer parking and stuff. I mean, we could say, I mean, you could, we could, that, could, that could be a conditional use for no parking out there. I mean, I don't know how you, you know, how you enforce that unless you just cops. I mean, you can put signs out there, no parking or whatever. But uh, couldn't the city enforce? That? I think. Public, I mean, he's, public he, right away is available for parking. Yeah, regardless. But he, he, yeah. I mean, they could park out there. As far as that's concerned, I'm sure they have people over every now and then, and they park in the street. Uh, but uh, he, I. He wants to be a good neighbor, and I and they plan on being a good neighbor if it passes. Are there any questions for Mr. French? Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Rory Thompson, twenty-seven fifty-nine Carl Stewart. Uh, just a couple things. You know, I live across from Carl Stewart, and I actually like that there's activity. My neighbors happen to be a pretty dense. Uh, subdivision. It's an older neighborhood right across from me. I, that didn't deter me at all from, from redeveloping that property. So I just want to say a couple things because there has been a lot of negative here tonight about people in general and tenants are good people. Tenants are families. Tenants are people that are looking to move to Conway to have have a family just, just like the people who can buy a house. And so I just kind of want to make that statement because there's been some things and yes they can cause crime but you know, when you, you fill an application to rent a place, you actually fill a criminal, uh, an application and a criminal application mm -hmm. out. When you go buy a property, there's none of that. So I hope and pray nothing ever happens over here. But that's just, uh, you know, there were some comments about Donaghy and things like that. Yeah, there, there is crime, guys. But we are, we are in a growing city. And I would say this, just uh, the last thing, and I'll, I'll do whatever the guys want to do, the neighbors want to do as far as working with them. I want to be a good neighbor. But I guarantee, I guarantee you when this neighborhood that they're living in now today was developed in West Conway, these same comments were said. And are there any questions for this speaker? Is there anyone else here to speak in favor of this request? Is there anyone here to speak in opposition of this request? Come on up. Hi, me again, Kevin Bass, 320 Reedy Road. Do I have to do that again? You do. You do. <laughs> okay. So, um, let me let me address uh, the multifamily that you've brought up a couple of times about a half mile down the road on the other side of the country club. The difference in what is being requested here is those apartments are not surrounded on three sides 
with nothing but resident with with residential subdivisions all right there's a there's a country club here and there's no subdivisions there this is different this the, the, this property has three subdivisions one back here one here and one here nobody in these subdivisions is 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 for this and there are a lot of other folks here that are in opposition and they're not getting an opportunity to speak what's the point in sending a letter saying there's a public hearing on this so that people can and voice their opposition or their support right hey question yeah your duplex borders this it borders that yeah uh-huh just i just what do the neighbors are they okay with that duplex there? What? What difference does that make, Lori? Well, because it's, it's been so, there. It's been there forever. They have family. That that it goes it, to the to the question of they, they have no choice on it because it's been there before they built their houses. But that is irrelevant. Can redevelop it just like this. It's is irrelevant. Big. Okay. Well, I just didn't I mean, know. If, why do you think that's relevant at all? I'm not. I'm not. Don't because be, oh, don't we're be looking at I'm multifamily, saying, and that is a duplex well, right there. Well, let, let me answer it this way: <clears throat> If that duplex wasn't there. And I came to this commission with a request to put that duplex there, then they would all have the right to come and do exactly what I'm doing. Yep. To okay. say, I don't want that duplex. Sir, I have a sir, question. hang on just a moment. I, I appreciate your passion for this. Yes. But please treat her with the respect of which she deserves when she asks you a question. No problem. Otherwise, all I said was, we it, don't... was real, it was irrelevant. And I, if you got offended, I apologize. We are passionate about it, and it's as not, we all are. I promise you guys, it's not personal at all. We just, we just, nobody around it wants this. That, and that's We're fair. And this is a public hearing to hear those comments, right? And we'll stay here all night if everybody wants to come up here. Okay. And so, if you feel that there are things that we have not heard, we are happy to hear that. But my request is that because it's not personal, please treat her with the respect that no which problem. she deserves. No now, problem. there is one item that I've been asked to clarify before we go back to, and I'll come to your question, Tanisha. Ryan, tell me what it is I need to clarify. Uh, this is for the conditional use permit for the increased density. The rezoning has passed. Um, so the rezoning has been approved by Planning Commission. This is just for the conditional use permit for the increased density to eight units. Thank you for that. I apologize for interrupting you. Can you go ahead and ask your question? That's okay. Thank you. Um, just how long have you owned that property? Which property? The uh, duplex or the du Mar the du houses? The duplexes. Um, about eight years, maybe. About eight seven years. Or eight, seven or eight has years. There any been, has there been any reported violent crimes that's taking place through duplexes? On mine? Yes. No. 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 Only in the house that's across the street. But it wasn't related to your duplex. It was not. Okay. No. And I'll just, I just want to reiterate one, one last. I think the biggest issue that I have is what a stretch it is going from R2 to MF1 and shoving high density houses right in the middle of nothing but single family subdivisions. Please don't let that happen. You've already gone R2, and I don't know what to expect now after that's happened. But, but please, take, let, let the next step go. And I'm sure that house, I mean, it's all going to be developed at some point. Yes, that old crappy thing needs to be, whatever that is, I don't know if it's a barn or whatever, it's, it, it'll come down. I mean, somebody's going to do, I mean, you could build a single house on it, you could put two or whatever, but shoving eight, Units on that one little lot, it's just not the right thing to do. Okay. Thank you. Are there any All other done. questions for this speaker? Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else here to speak in opposition? Yeah. My name is Glenda Reynolds, 3735 Ryan Road. I live off of Reedy, and there's only one way in and out of my subdivision. And there are times when I can't make a left on to read you to get out. And I was wondering, with this many uh, units, will it be, you know, make me worse getting out? So that's my concern. Thank you. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition of this? Greg Cherry, I'm at 340 Castlegate Drive. I am immediately behind this property that is the, quote, murder property. Um, the issue that we have isn't whether it's a murder property or that there's tenants. The issue has to do with the fact that the tenant owner or the manager is a property manager that did not follow through on keeping whoever was in there 
keeping them in line with what the code was. And more importantly, when we had disturbances, when we brought these before the police, we brought it before the management company, they were basic, basically deaf ears with regard to their follow-up. And I, my problem is, if I have somebody that's there that we can't control, we have no oversight over, you know, I don't want to constantly have to look at my back at 3 a.m. in the morning, 3.15 to be specific, and find out, you know, who was just firing off a rifle or a, or a pistol or whatever. And any of these properties that we're dealing with, whether it's a, a, a person that's, you know, renting it individually or whether there's, you know, college students, we can't control what the setting is. But what we can do is at least eliminate the possibility of somebody coming in there that will mismanage that. And that's what we're trying to deal with here is it's our residential area and our, our value, all that's impacted with regard to this conditional use provision. Thank you. Are there any questions for this speaker? Thank you. Come on up. Hello. Lori Quinn. Mm -hmm. yeah, my name is William R. Lacey. I live at 365 Castlegate, which is uh, my property actually abuts where the uh, green barn is. And I beg to differ with my neighbor, but I think my wife's been after that green barn for a lot longer, 20 something years. And the Can skunks, I, you and are the skunks. A, you are, yep, you're just a little taller than the previous. Could you move that up a little closer yep. to your, there you go, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Um, I noticed something was passed out to you. Can we see what that was? I think it's That's right the, over there. The drawing. Of course. I'm a lawyer, so you know I, I tend to be a little formal. Yeah, these are two stories, correct? I, I, is that I a question? That's my, yes, that's our understanding. Yeah mentioned down the street is how many stories? Which property? The one you mentioned down Reedy Road across College. No, I, I it wasn't me. me. I oh, asked the, sorry. I'm sorry. It was I you. asked the question about the duplexes down yeah. the street. And they are, but the inference I got was you were trying to make a comparison. But are they single or double story? Sir. I'm well aware that okay. they are single story, but let Thank me be clear about what your role is to here tonight. Yeah. It's not to interrogate tried, me or anyone on I'm this commission. Sir, please stop for just one moment. Mm -hmm. Your role here is to speak yeah. in opposition. It's not to play okay. judge, jury, or interrogate anyone on this. And if that is not a role that you can play, then we'll yeah. move on to the next speaker. No, I wanted to point out we have not seen this. So We haven't either till tonight. Right, no. and the notice that was in the paper was just simply a legal notice. What you had on your website, the only dimensions were on the property lines, not for the actual buildings. We couldn't tell whether they were two-story or one-story. I don't think anybody out here has really had adequate notice as to what he is trying to do, and therefore you have a lot of opposition. He hasn't come to us and asked us our opinion on what he's done. He hadn't shown us. So we, are, we will have to pursue this as, as far as we can because this, this is unbelievable with two stories looking over the street you have access there on Castlegate, a strip that's actually, I believe, owned by the Property Owners Association, platted that way. And you can have cars parked up and down that. And it's not a wide street. And you have kids walking up and down there to catch buses during the day. And, you know, they're just going to just, because I thought I heard him say that the parking would be behind. So we don't even know where the front doors are. Are they facing uh, Castlegate? Or are they facing the parking? There's a lot of unanswered questions in what he's presented. It doesn't seem like there's enough there to really grant a uh, conditional use because we don't know what the conditions are, what is required. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? One thing, um, and I think staff might help clarify this, part of the reason, and I've learned this through mm -hmm. this process, they're not required at this point to have any final drawings and all of that kind of, this is right. almost a courtesy because we see this all the time and we want to know. We, we say, well, what's it going to look like? What's it going to be? So most of the time we don't get to see this at this stage. Is that correct? That's correct. We put conditions in, um, in the conditional use permit that calls out things like building materials. Um, this will all go through site development review, which comes through staff. 
uh, to review. It'll have to meet the guidelines of the district that it's zoned to. Um, so this all will be reviewed. Will there be a public hearing on that? No. No. There won't. Thank you. Are there any other questions for this speaker? Okay. Thank you. Not. neighborhood he's like I said he's willing to work with the neighborhood on this he is willing to make it single story if that makes it more palatable uh, is one of the things thank you for that is there anyone else here to speak in opposition oh. okay uh. okay just just one just hang on I'm gonna let you ask your question but but you need to address your question to the commission and then okay. the chair will recognize any other speaker. So okay. if you have a question, go ahead and ask that. Okay, yes, I do have a question. I'm just following his, where, where is the front entrance to the property? Uh, if you could address your question to the commission. Okay, I'm sorry. I, I it's just, okay. I, I may just misunderstand. Where is the front entrance on these uh, on these drawings? Where are people gonna walk in the front of their, their townhome? Okay, Bobby, can you come up to the mic and address that please? It will be the inside, the the north, the north side. Yes, this, on the this, drive. Yes. On the drive. Yes, and that can be one of the conditions. I mean, you, you can put conditions of what type of materials. I mean, <laughs> hey, and this might be a you question. I don't know if it's a survey that part of it, but to answer the gentleman's question on James Court, if you look at that picture of the aerial, um, I don't know what page it's on, but it shows James Court. That's on page eighteen. Their drive comes out. I see what his concern is. Is if that if those houses come out and it's directly across from where would that be staggered or does it have to be? Is that a city thing? Is that a development thing? I don't. Because I mean, currently the driveway does not come out right in a butt with James Court. If you look at that, here. Do you want to see this? Because that's at least one concern we might be able to. Right now, James Court comes out there, and this. Existing drive. I think. The, well, that's further to the north. I think there. I think there's a. Well, that's that'd be a private drive, so it's not a public street. I think normally a public street's like 115 feet or something like that required between mm -hmm. offset in between them. All right. So that would be handled in site development review. Right. So not needed to handle tonight. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Ethan. Did you, did you have a comment that you were gonna? Okay. Did you have a comment, Lauren? Okay. All right. Back to you. I appreciate the question and thank you for coming up to answer that. Is there um, anyone else here to speak in opposition to this request? Come on up to the microphone. My name's Alan Ward, 325 Castle Gate. Uh, in reference to this, I moved Vault 325 Kesselgate, retiring possibly from ministry for about, I'm 78 years old. I found a quiet street. Dr. Steely told me I'm also a heart patient with cerebral stents. Dr. Steely told me your next visit with me will probably be open heart surgery. I wonder, has the council, the commission, I wonder has anybody considered the health of those that have invested their life savings into their home? It was a quiet neighborhood, but I just wonder if you have a, considered the health conditions of those that might be hearing gunshots, as some have said. But it disturbed this heart patient very much because I live across the street from where the murder house is. I pastored a church several, and I've evangelized missionary work. And in my churches, I found that usually there's one that 
tries to convince all the other church members. And with the spiritual gifts that God gives us, I sense that that same is here tonight. And thank you so much for allowing me to speak. Thank you. Are there any questions for the speaker? Please. Can you tell me where the murder house is? Because, I mean, we've heard, is it in your neighborhood? <laughs> I mean, I've, is it a house? It, okay. And the Perfect. neighbor to the left moved out immediately. The neighbor to the right moved out immediately. And I think that uh, if there's anything that could be considered, reconsidered, if somebody would, like I say, would consider those that live there and are, are, are at peace where they are. Mm -hmm. You're precious. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Okay. Thank you, sir. Are there, is there anyone else here that um, needs to speak in opposition of this request? Come on up. My name is James Wilbanks. I live at 3520 James Court. And I'm here with my wife to speak in opposition to this. There are four houses in that cul-de-sac that I live in. It's the value today of those four houses is a little bit over two million dollars and I can assure you that not that me and none of my neighbors would have purchased a house there if we had known something like this was going to be across the street from us that's all I have to say thank you are there any questions for the speaker thank you is there anyone else here that needs to speak in opposition to this request? Rodney Tyndall, 350 Castlegate. Um, one of the things that was brought up, I've just got a question. So, uh, and that is about the estimate for the sewer. Um, it was what, 100, 150, what was it? 120. $120,000. Was that $120,000 for one um, access point, or was that $120,000 for eight or nine or ten, however many of this is, access points? Bobby, is that a question you can answer? Oh, well, Mark, sorry. <laughs> I wasn't trying to steal your spotlight, Mark. Go ahead. Okay. I think that was for a four-lot configuration we looked at from what I remember. What would it be for a single-lot conversion to have a single house like they're now converted over to city sewer we didn't break it out but it would be less so it's only going to be over a hundred thousand if this passes that's a safe assumption okay well I, I found it interesting that that was brought up that it would cost that much to convert to city sewer because it wouldn't unless we go forward with this much higher level of density. I think that was a specious argument. Uh, also, the uh, commission, and then I don't want to, you know, pick on anybody in particular, but somebody up there just said a little while ago that uh, they're aware of other developments, and they've gone up in value. Can anybody on this commission name me a property in Conway that hasn't? gone up in value in the last three, four years. So I think if we're at comparing apples to apples, our concern with property values is definitely valid because we're not comparing three years ago property values to today. We're comparing today's property values to today. And when we put in a very high density level of development right next, uh, literally surrounded on three sides by very planned and platted subdivision that we are not really considering the reality. We're looking at, well, everything's got up in value, so 
obviously these properties that are adjacent to these other developments, that's that doesn't make sense. So I think uh, I think our point of property values is valid on that. I think we appreciate you bringing up your concerns with regard to the sewer, and so thank you for that. Are there questions for this speaker? Oh, well, there was your time. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. Is there anyone else that needs to speak in opposition of this request? Come on up. We've had a lot of opposition, so if there's anything you want to come back to just to try to keep it fair, I'll just give you a heads up that we'll do that. Just Jason Cole, 3705 Marley, um, also part of the Hickory Creek subdivision. Just wanted to make it known that there are other people here tonight in opposition that aren't willing to come up here and speak. So just wanted to make that point known. Thank you. We appreciate that. Is there anyone else here to speak in opposition? I'm Donna Evans. I'm at 345 Castlegate. I love Conway. I grew up in southeast Arkansas, and when we moved here 27 years ago, I feel like I moved to heaven. We bought our house on Castlegate then. We've lived there ever since then. I think almost everybody in the room is my neighbor. I walk the dog every afternoon. It's quiet. We love it. I can get across Reedy over to the trail. It's just it's just awesome. These are awesome folks. They've been there a long time, and we just want really what's best for our neighborhood. So, yeah. Are there any questions for the speaker? Thank you. Is there anyone else here that needs to speak in opposition to this request? I'm going to just maybe let you. No, you're fine. Yeah, go ahead. Um. You know, the sewer, we go to the sewer, you know, we're talking about that. The bulk of it is just getting it to the property. It's a, it's been a weird location. It's got to go underneath some power poles, guy wires. It was going to take a lot of equipment. Uh, you know, they talk about the density being way high. It's eight units, you know, on, a half, on an acre and a half. Eight units on an acre and a half in Conway is pretty normal. That's not a super amount of units. You know, a quarter acre, two-tenths of an acre, most lots. I mean, that's pretty... Pretty normal, um, you know. And the people in these, you look. I talked to Rory. You know, you look at the people that live in his. A lot of them are going to be home. They're going to be families. I mean, so they're going to be families. They're going to have kids. They're going. I mean, they're going to want to be in a good neighborhood too. I mean, they're not going to be out there hijacking or as they come by in their car and stuff or whatever. But uh, that's basically all I got. Unless y'all got any other questions. Yeah. Go ahead. All right, um, so some of the common concerns were what I've heard, and I'm not going to name all of them, was security. Um, the stories, you know, having two stories and parking. I think generally that's what the overall agreement was that those were the concerns. So do you, of course, value, again, I'm not going to name everything, but as I was saying, um, in regards to security, have y'all thought of any plans on how you're going to, you know, of course, keep the community safe, but as well as your tenants? Are there any security measures that you thought of as far as cameras, gatings, or anything of that nature? I don't know. I mean, I mean I'm assuming most of them would have a camera on their, mm -hmm. on their houses. Not About everybody has a, ha a camera. My daughter, she lives in something similar to this, and I went over there just the other day and put a ring camera up. I mean, so I'm, there's going to be cameras. Uh, you know, you're going to do check background checks and stuff. That's about all. I'm not, not sure what else you can do. I mean, if there's some recommendations somebody wants to make, I mean, I'm sure you know, as long as it's feasible, I mean, be willing to look at those. And like I said, he's more than willing to, I mean, do single story. Might have to make it a little bit smaller if it's single story. Uh, mm -hmm. But I mean, he's willing to work with them on, on that on that for sure. And It's, is that all your, are those all of your questions? Let's let Tanisia finish. Thank you. Yes. Um, in regards to, I, I believe one of um, our neighbors here was concerned about parking um, on the outside of mm -hmm. the property. Um, yeah. 
How how I, mean, could I, we... I would say you could probably be willing to say that there would be no parking out there, and he would be. I don't think you have a problem with with putting that in the condition. We're open to do whatever, but all the parking is supposed to be internal. Sure. So we're not supposed to be parking on the roads and things like that. Uh, but if we do reduce it from two stories to one, and I'll I'll work with with, with them on whatever. But part of the idea is to go two stories is to get a garage parking. So that's what okay. we're trying to do. Okay. Thank you, Tanisia. Um, we're going to leave this into commission right now at this moment. So, are there any? Um, are those all your comments, Bobby? Okay. All right. We're going to bring this into commission for discussion. Oh yes, go ahead, sir. Um, if you want to add a condition about stories, you can add that to the conditions. Uh, if you want to also make a condition that no access be taken off of Castlegate, you can make that condition as well. No access. Okay. Gotcha. All right. Commission, how about some discussion around this item? Yes, sir, go ahead. I just uh, wonder whether maybe a fence um, around the perimeter would be agreeable to the neighbors and the owners that would curtail parking. Um, it, you know, for most people who are lazy, they're not going to walk around the fence uh, right. to the front of the street. So just that might be an addition that might be helpful in the process. You'd be fine with the fence. Okay. Let's keep this, let's keep this discussion. I, I, I just want to make a comment here tonight. We have had meetings with this room, standing room only, and maybe it was because we didn't have the guidelines up, but I would just request that we treat each other with decorum for the rest of the evening because several times we have gotten out of bounds tonight. So um, we, we are trying our best as volunteers to hear everybody's perspective and ask good and thoughtful questions. And so my request for the rest of the meeting is that, that we try to do that. Um, so with that, you, you are agreeable to offense. Thank you. Brooks, I think that's a great question. And I would want to add the, the parking situation. That was, I know Ethan said that's not for tonight, but technically if we can write that in, if that's a concern that we can cross off, no on-street parking and the parking is all inside, I would like to add that. And then the two-story, we heard that from a couple of people. They didn't want to see two stories. And if the applicant's agreeable to that, I think we should add that. But, you know, I think that that is a good point about the two-story. I'm... This is not my business, so I'm not an expert. I, I thought I heard him say that if it's not two-story, there wouldn't be a garage. Mm -hmm. And it's been a long time since I've rented, but I would assume that a garage is going to bring a higher level of clientele. And so that may be something that the commission wants to consider or not consider. I don't, I'm not an expert in that. I don't know. It's not my, you know, it's not my business. It's your business, not my business. Do we know if Castlegate's a public street? It is. is that true? Can't Would you guys take away the garage? If it was one story, and then so then, then all the units would still stay. I guess they're like three bedrooms. So then they'd all still stay three bedrooms. Just to sorry answer your question. There's actually plans for both. So okay. You see a two story. You okay. see one story. There's a so that'll kind of show you if we transition to one story, we'll have to do something like that. Ethan, did you have the two stories? On I think it's just a front and back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, my question for Ryan was: Castlegate is a public street; it's not a private street. So, if I'm correct, we cannot control parking on a public street. The best thing we could do is put a make them fence. put a fence up. Yep. Then that would make them walk around. But he could have guidelines in his tenant policy to say that. And we mm -hmm. just can't. Mm -hmm. um, my comment was kind of just. If it goes from two story to one story, that's just gonna it's gonna be the same amount of bedrooms. It's gonna be two less parking spots per unit. Is it, is it not? Oh, sorry. I thought you were going. No, no, you're, no go ahead. Um, so I'm just saying. I think if it goes from two story to one story, that would just create more problems with parking. It'd be the same amount of people, same amount of bedrooms, just less parking. So. Those are good comments. Thank what you. I'm, for that. What I'm saying is, I think one story would be worse than two. I appreciate those comments. This, this is what this time is for. Mm -hmm. I, I tend to agree with Vincent there that I, I, I mean, 
if we knew that moving it to one story that the neighbors would all be agreeable and think, yeah, this is great, then I would be open to that. I don't feel like that's going to change the opposition here from the comments that we received tonight. So Can we ask that? Sure. Ask it. I think that's a great... If We know one person said that would change his mind, but... Uh, so, but I'm afraid to ask the question and ask it assaulted again. So <laughs> but I would raise look a hand. Like for, yeah, raise a hand. You know what? I think that that, I think everybody's trying here. And so I guess without comment, just by a show of hands, if it were to be considered in the conditional use permit, if we were to put the stipulation of single story, does that change the mind of anyone that is here in opposition? Okay, thank you. My dog, my and would the applicant prefer two-story? Okay. And then you have cars parked in a garage, not out on the, in the concrete pad. That's a good question. All right, since utilities are brought up, I'm going to chime in. So the utilities, the sewer, You're the You're going to have to get closer to that microphone. The utilities, the sewer, the water, the overhead electric line, those have all been in place for at least 10 years when the owner bought the property. He knew those circumstances were in place. Uh, we did increase the density, realizing that the overhead line decreases the developable property. So we rezoned to R2A, which does help. I think an uh, increase in density in MF1 is not appropriate for this location. My two cents. I appreciate those comments. Are we ready for more comments? Uh, yes, yeah. I think based on proportional to the things that we've heard tonight, sure, comments from the commission. So, and I apologize, I think emotion got the better of me a second when I made my assault comment, so my apologies. I understand that the reason that everyone out here is here is because you care about the area surrounding your homes and you care about our community. It's also why we are all here as mm -hmm. volunteers, because we care about our community. And I want to recognize something that Lori and I have talked about a good deal and this commission has talked about before, is that for Conway to continue to grow, we do have a housing issue that we have to address and it is only addressed by higher density. It is the only way that it's addressed. I understand that we all have preferences for what be around our property, and there's been mentioned multiple times tonight of if this passes that you will appeal it to council, and I hope that you will if it mm -hmm. passes. I hope that you will, because there are elected representatives that, ha that, that are paid, where we are volunteers, that have to hear those concerns, and you have every right to play every card. Mm -hmm. If we go to vote on this, I don't know where it's going to go, but our goal is not to put someone in anybody's yard that they don't want. Again, we are all volunteers. Multiple of you that spoke in opposition, I've worked with before, and I respect you. It is not personal. We are all just looking at it as this appropriate land use. And I think that it's worth, again, mentioning here, I'm an entrepreneur. You know, Mr. Thompson's got work to do here. And he's, again, I think if we look at the pattern of development, for me, there is, a, there is an attractive pattern of development that is the kind of multifamily that I would want to see. Can I ask Mark to explain a little more why he is opposed to the MF? Can Thanks. you tell me a little bit more? I think it's a great question. Ron, I think you said if it was rezoned R2A without the overhead energy encumbrance, you could do a maximum of six structures. Bobby, you want to address Restriction. that? Six lots? Three. Three lots. Three duplexes. So six units. Without the overhead being there. You had the 1.5 acres. We're going to get lapel mics. Energy, That's how it meant. about energy's power line? Yeah, if that wasn't there, if you had 1.5 acres, how and many that wasn't units there, could you, you could fit get more units on yeah, R2A? Sure. I want to say I, I heard mean, six the, earlier. Well, you got to have 100 foot road frontage. So you could have two. Well, still, you could only have two on Castlegate because it's 298. You're probably going to end up dedicating more right away over there. It's going to be less. So you're going to get two over there and one or two. So three, four at the very most. Yeah. Well, my reasoning, Lori, was. I feel like R2A is appropriate zoning for the surrounding areas. Okay. I feel like MF1 is not. And I'm, I'm leaning towards that, but for tonight, the applicant is requesting that. So that's, so we're either, if he doesn't have another option, you know, is this, for me tonight, I'm just trying to, what, what is our next step? The, this is a property owner. He wants to do something better than what is there. And this is what I feel like we run into. Yeah. Um, and again, it goes back to my question I had earlier of if that is discussed, and uh, of course, he's very different. He's a developer. He's not just an average, you know, property owner. But if he's meeting with planning before it gets here, is, 
is are the other options presented as a possibility? And I don't know, Ryan, if that's a staff question or does the does the applicant say this is what I want to do and no other options are presented? No, we've discussed this for years. Okay. I mean, before I've been here, they were discussing this. He property. mentioned it had been going on for. Mm -hmm. So I would tend to agree with you if everything was buildable and we weren't capping them at eight units. But since we are capping them at eight units, um, you know, I feel like the, M the MF1 designation is almost deceptive giving the buildable area and what we are capping them at. If we were doing a full rezone to MF1, then I would probably say absolutely not. Uh, but since we're able to put conditions on it, we're able to meet some of the, the neighbor's concerns in those conditions and make it a nice development. Um, the conditional use perm permit allows us more control as opposed to a full rezone to MF1. So that's why I like this option better than, I mean, he could have came and asked for MF1, uh, but I think, you know, that would have probably been denied because there wouldn't have been able to be control. Um, so in this aspect, I would say, because we can't control it, we can add the fence, we can, we can work through those things. Um, I, I would be in, in favor of this request. Go ahead. Yeah, we moved to Conway three years ago, and um, we bought in Centennial subdivision. It's mostly residential, but there's a very similar area to this in Centennial. There are high lines going through that subdivision, and I don't know the exact history, but I, I believe that the developers said, okay, we're not gonna sell houses here, but rental properties would be okay here. And so there are rental properties there in Centennial and uh, we bought our house knowing that those rental properties were there. Um, you know, so as I asked myself, would I be okay with this rental property going into my neighborhood the answer is yes um, we had very similar property and it didn't deter us from from buying so um, i do support the mf1 just because i think the proposed project with the restrictions is um, going to not affect the value of the properties and is not going to affect the safety of of the community thank you for your comments brooks are there any other comments from the commission? So just to kind of recap, I have made notes, and I could have missed things because you're better at this than me, um, that there were two suggested potential um, additions to the recommendations of, and whether these make sense or not, I'm just recapping my notes, no on-street parking and a fence. And so... I think ideally if we're going to, and we don't always do this just because of the way things play out, if we're going to make any additions to the recommendations, we actually need to vote on those as an amendment. So I'm going back to my parliamentarian roots here and going to make us do all the, all the things on Robert's Rules of Order. So if you want to make any additions, we need to make a motion to amend the recommendations and vote on the amendment first. So the no street parking, I think we need to clarify if we're allowed to do this since it is a well, city right. street. I think the city enforces that, don't yeah. they? In some I mean, way? We're about to put up signs. Yeah. No parking. <laughs> don't park here. The street department does that. We're, okay. we, we can't make okay. him put up signs on a public right away. I think that's fair. I think there's... So, yeah, you know, I, I don't know that we can actually do that. Now, during site development review, it could be recommended that the street department put that up, uh, but I don't, I don't think we can condition it as a use. Correct me if I'm wrong in that. Okay. Well, then let's not do it if we can't do it. But, but I, I do agree with the fence. I think... Again, most people are not going to park over there and walk all the way around the fence. So I think that solves most of the problem with the condition we can. So I, I make a motion to add a 13th um, condition that there be a fence uh, with the material as determined by the planning group. I second the motion. We are only voting on the amendment, okay? Not the thing in the book. So uh, I have a motion to amend the staff recommendations to add a fence. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Okay, that passes. So the, the current motion has been amended. And so if there is any discussion on the new current motion with the fence added as a 13th recommendation, we can have that discussion. If there is no discussion, I will take a motion. Make a motion to approve the conditional use permit with the 13 conditions. Second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? No. No. 
with that, we're going to take a voice vote. And so to clarify for this, it requires five votes, I think. That's, there's nine of us, right? So that's five. Are we all in agreement that it takes five? Okay. All right. So voice vote. Ethan. Yes. Lori Quinn. I'm voting on the. You're voting on the conditional use for MF one as yes, with the with, amendment. With the amendment, yes. I'll say yes. Mark Ferguson. No. Alexander is not here. Jensen Tilkey. Yes. Jay Winborn. No. Brooks Davis. Yes. Can you see a round tree? Yes. Drew Spurgers, I'm a yes. That's seven yeses, and I vote no. So with that, the motion passes. Is that correct?